Hey folks, welcome. Um, good afternoon. Um, so welcome to the installation of the Judy Yin Shi uh, PhD professor in anxiety disorders. Uh, my name is Jimmy Potash, and I am the, uh, the Henry Phipps Professor and the Director of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. It is wonderful to see all of you here today. Uh, it, it is a privilege uh, for me to have the chance to welcome uh, Stephen Ganji, who's the Interim Provost of, of Johns Hopkins University, uh, Ted DeWeese, who's the Interim Dean and, uh, of the Medical Faculty and the CEO of Johns Hopkins Medicine, I'm very happy to welcome uh, Judy Shi, who made this professorship possible, and, and is our honoree. Uh, and I want to welcome Judy's husband, uh, where is he, Lee McCabe, who I know well, uh, who Judy uh, previously honored uh, at an event like this one uh, by creating the Oliver Lee McCabe III PhD professorship in the Neuropsychopharmacology of Consciousness. Uh, welcome to Judy's son, James. Uh, welcome to uh, Lee's children and their spouses, Michael, Joanna, and Sean. Thank you all for being here. I want to take a moment to make a special introduction uh, to you all. We're honored to have uh, Mary McClasson here with us today, who I uh, just had the pleasure of, of chatting with, who is delightful. Uh, Mary and her husband, Jack, are significant donors. Um, to, to uh, the Judy Shee Professorship in Anxiety Disorders, and we're extremely grateful. Uh, we're saddened that Jack, who passed away last December, uh, is not here today to share in this celebration with us, but we recognize the importance of his and Mary's uh, contribution. Thank you, Mary. And welcome to Mary's son, uh, Bob Wallace, who I also just had the, the pleasure of chatting with. Uh, I'm also pleased to extend a warm welcome um, to the inaugural recipient of the professorship, uh, Dr. Joe Bienvenu and his wife, Holly Tomanak. Uh, it's great to have so many family members and friends and colleagues of, and charitable supporters of Dr. Bienvenu here to. Uh, share in this in this special day with us. Welcome to, to all of you. So now I want to turn the program over uh, to Dr. DeWeese, who will uh, present the Judy and Chi PhD professorship in anxiety disorders. Ted. Thank you, Jimmy. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. It's a great crowd already. Um, it's a real pleasure uh, for me to be here. Uh, as we all get to celebrate the dedication, as Jimmy noted, of the Judy Yin Shi Professorship in uh, Anxiety Disorders. And Judy, thank you very much uh, for this honor that you've bestowed on us. But also, of course, to celebrate uh, its most worthy inaugural recipient, Dr. Joe Benvenu. Joe, congratulations. <laughs> I'd just like to also reiterate uh, a couple points that Jimmy made, which were one, thank you very much, because uh, as noted, um, Judy, you've supported your second professorship now, and that's fantastic, but you've also dedicated your time and your energy to the advisory board uh, of the Department of Psychiatry and helping extend not just the legacy of the department, but really driving future forward and helping Jimmy understand where he could uh, do that and it's supporting its faculty, its discovery missions, its education. So thank you for the time you've dedicated to that very, very much. Um, and as noted, I would also like to uh, myself thank uh, Mrs. McClasson. I had the great pleasure of meeting her a few moments ago. And uh, indeed, we've lost your husband, but as you noted, what a great uh, Memorial Day for him, given that we're coming on to that time of his passing. And uh, your dedication to the department, uh, to Joe, uh, means a great deal to us. So thank you very much for what you've done for us, Mrs. McClasson. Um, of course, now on to the person of the day. Um, many of you know that Joe, and I've learned more about uh, Joe than he knew about himself because I got to <laughs> chat with his mother. And as, uh, 
as one of our finest psychiatrists at the Johns Hopkins told me, if you meet the mother first, then you already have the diagnosis done. So I feel very privileged to have had that happen. Um, but for, the view, for those of you not so um, lucky to have met uh, Mrs. Benvenu, um, they are from Louisiana. Um, and Joe grew up in New Orleans and attended Tulane, great university, and then LSU for medical school, and then really decided, hmm, there is a great place up north. And he came to Johns Hopkins and internship, residency, basically never left. Yeah, I know the feeling. But anyway, um, but even post-residency, stayed here, uh, started a, a program in uh, psychi psychiatric epidemiology, um, but at the same time went through that really fab fabulous PhD program in clinical investigation uh, and the Bloomberg and School of Medicine program. And then leading him here, joining the faculty um, and integrating and investigating not just psychiatry but genetic epidemiology associated with that, particularly anxiety disorders and their relationship to personality traits. I'm glad I have not been one of your uh, patients. <laughs> there, there'd be plenty to be learned uh, on my cap. So in the mid-2000s, uh, Joe also began collaborating, and I think really importantly and arguably as the arc of histories kind of happened post-COVID, his relationship with folks in critical care medicine, those folks who manage our really most ill patients in the ICU, and the, um, and the trauma that happens to patients, uh, both of course physically but um, psychologically as they have to try to maneuver through that time, and the relationship of his work, anxiety, that post-discharge, um, pre- and post-discharge, a trauma, sort of a post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and Joe, I'm sure that has been very helpful, beyond just interesting, but very helpful to a number of patients. Uh, and thank you for doing that uh, for us. With all of that, he's published multiple manuscripts, 200-ish, yeah, plus minus, who's counting. Lots of book chapters. Uh, he's been on the editorial board of the General Hospital Psychiatry, where he was an associate editor, been a very active member in a number of professional societies including Anxiety and Depression Association of America, the American Delir Delirium Society, and the Academy of Consultation Liaison Psychiatry. And with all of that, he's spent a lot of time doing what we hope people who are lucky enough to get an endowed professorships do well, and that is to mentor and to help train the next leaders in psychiatry. Uh, and I mean that, the next leaders in psychiatry, not just great doctors, but that. And Joe, thank you for that. Because of all those things, that's why we're here today, um, because endowments are that important, Joe, to what we do, to help support what we do. Well done, Joe, well done. Um, because endowments are for professorships and that they're, uh, our professorships are held and administered by the university, we must formally present them to the university. And so today we're lucky to have our interim provost, as Jimmy noted, Dr. Stephen Ganji, and I'll ask Stephen to join me. Um, and as Dean of the School of Medicine, uh, Dr. Ganji, I formally present to you the Judy Yin Shi Professorship in Anxiety Dis Disorders in the Department of Psychiatry. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, and thank you uh, for the invitation to be here. I'm really delighted to uh, help celebrate this wonderful occasion uh, both for uh, Joe and Johns Hopkins Medicine in general, uh, to honor Dr. Du Judy Shi, who made this moment possible. Uh, so first, let me uh, uh, formally accept uh, the Judy Yin Shi Professorship of Anxiety Disorders on behalf of the university. Uh, as Ted said, the importance of a professorship is, uh, in any academic field at Johns Hopkins, is uh, really can't be overstated. It's really important. Uh, uh, but none, you know, more important than emergent areas where, like anxiety disorders, where the data and the interventions are truly changing at a rapid pace. Uh, and the foresight and generosity uh, of Dr. Judy Shi and the McClassons uh, really will benefit us in several ways. Um, first of all, the professorship will provide the opportunity uh, for advancing cutting-edge research. Uh, uh, both in the, in the School of Medicine, but importantly in the, in the Department of Psychiatry, which is, you know, such a collaborative, uh, collaborative uh, uh, department. Uh, 
The faculty conduct studies to show and understand not only epidemiology, the causes and risk factors of disease, uh, but also treatment modalities uh, for diseases and conditions like anxiety disorder. Research breakthroughs contribute to the development of more effective treatments that we know uh, may come from anywhere, right? They may fall um, um, uh, out of left field uh, and may not be immediately obvious. Uh, I know that Dr. Xi has been an important supporter of research in psychoactive uh, compounds uh, that have been hard to study uh, because of regulatory or political or society uh, uh, trends and, and reasons. Um, I personally have had uh, colleagues uh, who have uh, had uh, treatment with psilocybin uh, and benefited tremendously uh, from these treatments for anxiety and depression. Um, the data on these approaches, and the data are strong, right? The data are using uh, the same rigorous methods that we would use, uh, just like a cholesterol medication, just like a cancer therapy, uh, has been remarkable and really hold high promise uh, for new innovations ahead. Um, uh, like I said, the personal stories I've heard have been transformational. And uh, such research might not have been pursued without the combination of innovative faculty, academic freedom that gives uh, faculty the ability to pursue uh, their novel ideas, and then gifts like this one that give them the resources to actually be successful. Second, the SHE prof professorship will allow us to advance our teaching and education mission as, as Ted indicated. You all know that the School of Medicine serves as a training ground for the next generation of healthcare professionals and leaders. Uh, this gift will ensure medical students, residents, fellows in the top-ranked Department of Psychiatry will receive the insights and knowledge of faculty that will give them specialized training in diagnosing and treating anxiety disorders. Again, amplifying the, 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 the gift. Uh, we're extremely grateful to you for your timely and important gift that really is so important in this current post-pandemic world. We need a steady supply of qualified mental health professionals who can address the growing demand for mental health care. The pandemic has heightened stress levels globally uh, due to health concerns, <clears throat> social uh, isolation, and economic uncertainty and grief. The persistent stressors associated with the pandemic may lead to an increased prevalence of anxiety disorders in the post-pandemic era. Uh, this wouldn't be surprising. We saw this with SARS. We saw this with H1N1. We saw this with Ebola. We saw this with MERS, which all saw higher prevalence of anxiety disorders after these infectious agents. Uh, I'm someone who studies HIV for 30 years, and the high you know, uh, levels of anxiety and depression in those populations uh, has been evident uh, for a long time, partly due to my wonderful colleague in the, in the back. Um, I, I also see this clearly uh, at our own campus uh, and among our student population. A recent study of over 30,000 college students reported nearly a third of college students reporting having been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. And over 10% reported symptoms consistent with severe anxiety. The number of reported cases of student anxiety have, has increased over 50% over the past eight years, and counseling centers, including the one here at Johns Hopkins, are facing unprecedented demand. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's no doubt that uh, addressing anxiety and disorders in this post-pandemic uh, world is crucial. It's crucial for the, the, uh, our own workforce and students. It's crucial for healthcare systems, policymakers, and communities to all prioritize uh, mental health. Uh, this includes increasing awareness, expanding access to care, providing targeted support for vulnerable populations, and promoting resilient strategies. Uh, in fact, our new 10 for 1 strategic plan that was released last week recognizes the importance of this uh, for our workforce as well as our students, uh, in which we aim to cultivate not only our distinctive culture, but also make mental health and wellness an essential part of our campus experience. And I look forward to working with uh, the entire department on figuring out ways uh, to promote that to our students. Uh, so it's pretty clear researchers and healthcare workers like Dr. Bienvenu 
uh, have their work cut out for you, um, but we're confident in you. We know that you can rise to the challenge. Uh, congratulations on this wonderful honor and a deep appreciation to Dr. Shi and the McClassons uh, for advancing this important professorship. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ganji, for those wonderful remarks. Uh, it's great pleasure uh, to be able to thank our lead donor for this professor professorship, Judy Shi. Uh, Judy has ample experience in academia. Uh, she earned her doctorate at UMBC in public policy, the concentration in health policy. And before that, she completed a master's degree in psychology and worked as a clinician in our department's child psychiatry division and in other settings. And Judy's told me about her father, who also got a PhD, his being in, in plant genetics, and, and how his experience, his life experience, inspired her to establish this professorship. So I have to tell you that I, first of all, feel bonded to Judy around these PhDs, because regarding her degree, because my wife is a professor at UMBC, uh, and I feel very attached to that wonderful institution. And also regarding her father's degree, because I spent six years in Iowa, which is one of the nation's leading agricultural states, and Iowa's wealthiest man ran a company focused on corn and soybean seed genetics. Uh, of course, anxiety disorders are partly influenced by genetics. They're also caused in substantial part uh, by the environment and by experience, as we were just hearing. Uh, and we all, I guess, sort of intuitively have a feeling for that. Some of the clinical resources that can be brought to bear on treating and preventing anxiety involve marshalling the experience and the wisdom derived from diverse cultural traditions. For example, meditation, which has been shown to reduce stress and anxiety in, in, a, in a lot of systematic, randomized, controlled studies. And of course, this practice is several, at least several thousand years old. It was written about in Hindu tradition and, and Buddhist texts and Taoist religious texts long ago. So Judy grew up in Taiwan and has lived in Iowa and lived in California as well as being, living in Maryland. She, she's really a citizen of the world. Um, and she's thought deeply about the relationship of um, the realms of culture and, and spirit and the arts to the realms of the scientific. And she's brought all of this together, all these interests together in a book club that she initiated and, and, uh, uh, and happily involved me and includes her husband, Lee. Uh, and it also includes some faculty members and friends of our department. And we've enjoyed thought-provoking books like Proust was a neuroscientist. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the most intriguing title. At the Existentialist Cafe, that's not a bad one either. And Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind. And we've also enjoyed the occasional poem that Judy has composed, having been inspired by the books in the book club experience. And, and uh, I particularly like this verse of hers. My life is like a tree made of earth, air, and water. My branches reach for sky filled with hope and wonder. So I, I, I greatly admire Judy's intellectual and artistic gifts, and I'm grateful to her for her service to the department. As Ted mentioned, she's been on our advisory board. She's been co-chair of our advisory board for the last two years. She's been very engaged, very effective in that role, been a terrific partner to me, a great partner to our co-chair, Doug Strauss, who's with us today, uh, to our former development director, Karen Hussey, and she's been a great partner to our current, current, uh, current development director, Monica Buda. Uh, Judy, thank you so much for, for all that you've brought to our department, and in particular for your wonderful generosity in creating this professorship. I, I, I know it's going to make a significant and meaningful contribution to the healing and the well-being of people suffering with anxiety now and, and for generations to come. So it's an honor for us to be linked in perpetuity with you 
in our shared mission of leading the way forward in mental health as we all reach skyward to seeking to fill our patients and their families with hope. I'll turn it over to you, Judy. Thank you, Dr. Potash, and for your kind words and introduction. Um, I would also like to thank our interim provost, Dr. Ganji, our uh, interim Dean DeWeese, uh, faculty, staff, friends, and family um, for coming here today for this installation ceremony to honor Dr. Joseph Bienvenu as the inaugural recipient of this professorship and to celebrate the launch of the Jack and Mary McGlasson Anxiety Disorders Clinic. You may wonder how I come to establish this professorship in anxiety disorders. Um, I have lived in many different states and in other countries, and, but I raised my children in Maryland. And, uh, but I moved away to California and Oregon about 20 years ago now, and I moved back to uh, Maryland in 2018. And I uh, asked Lee how I can become more engaged in the community. And Lee, my husband, suggested I look to my areas of interest. And I've been interested in the research in psychedelics back in the 1990s. I read a book called Storming Heavens. And I know that uh, Lee was a uh, researcher um, that conducted NIH-funded research in um, LSD back in the 60s and 70s. And, and he introduced me to Dr. Roland Griffith and the research team at the Bayview campus. And it was during that conversation that I learned that since the government shut down the funds, that most of the uh, research dollars were coming from, um, from private philanthropic sources. Uh, and that it was a constant struggle for the researchers to go after the funds. It was taking a lot of their time away from their work. And it was also a constant struggle to kind of prove that they should continue in this line of work. So I thought that this will be an area that I would like to support. And also I thought it would be really wonderful to be able to um, jointly recognize and acknowledge uh, Dr. Oliver Lee McCabe and Dr. Roland Griffith as the two early pioneers in psychedelic research. And that's why I created the um, Oliver Lee McCabe professorship in the psychoneuropharmacology of consciousness. And this was back in the 2018 when I had brought this up with Dr. Potash. And I have um, Mike DeVito, um, I'm not sure where he is, to thank for uh, coordinating this effort over a five-year period because the McKay professorship was actually launched in 2020, but because of COVID, we weren't able to celebrate until earlier this year. Uh, but during, in 2018, just as I'm having this conversation, another very generous donor came forth and created a matching funds campaign. And this gave me this opportunity to establish a second professorship. And I asked Dr. Potash for his guidance as to regarding the needs in our department. And uh, the anxiety disorders really resonated with me. And um, I also had the... Um, honor and um, privilege to meet Dr. Bienvenu and learned of his, um, his tremendous uh, dedication to the students as well as compassion for the, for the patients. In fact, it is his uh, ability to establish a deep, caring, and trusting relationship with uh, the patients that inspire the McGlasson family to uh, establish the Jack and Mary McGlasson uh, anxiety Disorders Clinic, and we want to thank them for their generosity. Thank you so much. Um, I know that anxiety affects a lot of people, um, and according to the National Institute of Mental Health, anxiety and mood disorders are probably the most often uh, diagnosed psychological conditions, and moreover, oftentimes people suffer from more than one uh, psychological condition, and anxiety is a comorbidity. Um, I, too, have a family and personal history with anxiety. My father suffered from anxiety, and he uh, didn't like to be in enclosed spaces, so he avoided traveling by plane and by, um, 
by car sometimes. And um, he passed away in 20, let's say 2002, the year I, I completed my PhD. And, um, and I, who have never had any problem with enclosed spaces, suffered a panic-like attack on the plane on my flight back from his funeral. And uh, it was kind of like um, during his life, he shielded me from this anxiety, but when he passed away, he no longer could do so. And thinking back, I think my parents actually did shield us from a lot of the existential anxieties that confront a, um, an immigrant family coming to this country. Uh, he actually, my father came to this country in, uh, early, in the late 1950s to get his PhD in agronomy and genetics. And he worked in this country for about 10 years. And then he went back to Taiwan to head the national, the Taiwan National Sugar Research Institute. And later in life, he actually traveled extensively to, uh, to lecture around the world. Uh, so despite his anxiety, he was able to do all this, uh, but he dealt with anxiety uh, very privately. He, he never gave a name to it. He didn't um, uh, talk about it. <laughs> uh, he never sought treatment for it. And I thought that I would like to, uh, originally I was going to name after my father, but I thought that I would like to take on the mantle of champion for the treatment, for the education, for the research in anxiety disorders. Um, I, I feel like I've come to a point in my life when I'm no longer asking, what more do I want from life, but what, what does life still expect from me? And I do feel very blessed, and I uh, feel like it's time for me to give back. Um, there are many people that I would like to thank for helping me along this life journey. Um, I have invited some of them here today so I can thank them personally. Um, first, I want to say how proud I am of my children. Um, they are here today. My daughter Elizabeth said that she's going to tune in online. She's in Ann Arbor, so hi, Elizabeth, <laughs> if I'm online. <laughs> uh, my, my children are each accomplished in their own way, but what I'm most proud is that they're really loving and caring people, and uh, they're hardworking, and they have honorable character. And I remember there's a poster that used to hang my daughter's um, bedroom. It said, mothers hold their children's hand for a little while, but they hold their hearts forever. And I hope my children know how much I love and care for them. Um, next, I want to thank my husband, Lee. <laughs> I look to him for wisdom. Uh, there's a saying that goes when when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. <laughs> Lee doesn't give unsolicited advice, but he does offer gentle suggestions and hints if I ask. And then he waits patiently and lovingly for me to discover, <laughs> because he knows that I can see only when I'm ready to see, when I am uh, willing to see. Um, now I realize that the teacher has always been there. The wonders in this world has always been there. It's just waiting for me to open my eyes. Uh, it is a truism in life that things aren't all black and white, and the other side can't be all wrong, and I can't be all right. And these days, I ask myself how I can be so sure. Um, I'd like to think that there's a certain wisdom to staying open, to listening, and considering other perspectives. We have to actively work at staying open to see beyond what we have learned to see and to seeing beyond our own prejudices, biases, and preconceptions. And this lesson I learned from my uh, PhD advisor, Dr. Nancy Miller, who is here today. I want to say a special thank to Dr. Nancy Miller. Uh, she is the current chair of the Department of Public Policy at UMBC. For those of you who are teachers, and I know many of you here are, I want to say that you can have an impact and inspire change by the person you are as much as by the information that you impart. I learned a lot about economics, about uh, political science, about our healthcare system, uh, but more importantly, Dr. Miller taught me to be aware of my own personal biases, prejudices, and preconceptions. 
She taught me that it was my responsibility as a policy major to stay informed and to consider all sides of the issue. And Dr. Miller consistently modeled for her students the characteristics of excellence and integrity combined with compassionate spirit. And I believe these two are the values uh, that exemplified by Dr. Bienvenu. And oftentimes it is the example of character that teach the most. And I want to thank Dr. Miller and Dr. Bienvenu uh, for inspiring those that you touch. Thank you. And finally, I want to thank Dr. Jimmy Potash for giving me the opportunity to engage with those at the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. Uh, I appreciate his openness to exploring new ideas, um, his uplifting and positive spirit, and he always has an encouraging word for everyone. Um, I embrace his vision for Hopkins Psychiatry to make a change in the world, and I believe that a movement towards our mental well-being begins to change that leads to growth in our life. I will close by thanking each of you who have touched my life and for being the person that you are. Thank you all for inspiring me to be a better person. And it is the relationship and sharing that enrich and give us meaning. And thank you so much. <laughs> Wow, Judy, thanks. That was, thanks for sharing such a meaningful and, and really quite inspiring story. You're a tough act to follow. <laughs> that was impressive. Um, boy, what an enormous pleasure it was um, and is for me to be able to put forward Dr. Joe Bienvenu for this wonderful honor for which we're gathered today. Joe will always be indelibly and very fondly imprinted on my mind as the person who initiated me into the fellowship of the Phipps, or better, the family of the Phipps, for the uninitiated. The Phipps is the historic name for our psychiatry department. Uh, I had just come back from Baltimore in 1995 after years spent in the Republic of Benin in West Africa. I was working as a general practitioner uh, for the US Agency for International Development and the Peace Corps. Uh, and in my spare time, I was reading psychiatry, historical things like Freud's interpretation of dreams and practical books like the pocket handbook for the psychiatry resident. Um, and after a year's worth of anticipating residency, I arrived in Baltimore 10 days ahead of the July 1st starting date, and I was eager to finish my preparation, so I thought I'd better call my chief resident, Joe Bienvenu, on the phone and ask him what to expect. And uh, I don't remember what he said. <laughs> but I remember very well how he said it and how it made me feel. He was warm and, and thoughtful, kind, supportive, welcoming. And I came away thinking, this is someone who's going to be there for me, who I'll be able to rely on to, to get me through the challenges that might arise, who will provide comfort, sound guidance along the way. And it couldn't have been a more wonderful way to start, begin my residency and my relationship to the department. And as I look back on it now, I realize that must be exactly the way Joe has struck so many patients with, with anxiety uh, uh, and other issues when they've called him in distress and come to the office seeking his support and expertise. He's been a wise and steady presence in the Anxiety Disorders Clinic, which he now directs, the clinic now known as the John and Mary McLesson Anxiety Disorders Clinic. Uh, he has provided valuable guidance to countless residents as director of their outpatient continuity clinic. He's taken his expertise and used it to help patients with anxiety in the setting of medical problems like those with pulmonary issues and those in intensive care units. Uh, as Dr. DeWeese noted. Along the way, Joe's become a master consultation liaison psychiatrist, that is, advising physicians of all kinds and how to care for the mental health needs of their patients. Uh, in addition to being a terrific clinician and educator, he early on embraced the Hopkins spirit of inquiry. He did a research fellowship with one of our best clinician researchers, Jerry Nestat, and spent a year training with perhaps the world's leading 
psychiatric researcher, Ken Kendler in Virginia. And then, uh, as Ted mentioned, he impressively, Joe impressively took on and accomplished the extremely ambitious goal of getting a PhD in clinical investigation while continuing to do his day, day job. I mean, that's, that's a big task. Um, he went on to publish large numbers of papers, as we heard earlier, and many of them very, very impactful papers. They've involved the relationship of obsessive compulsive disorder to other anxiety disorders, relationship of personality to anxiety disorders, risk of PTSD um, in association with the experience of being in an intensive care unit. And that last area uh, was really quite important and consequential, and, and it's begun to influence our ability to actually change the long-term outcomes of patients. Joe is a gem. He's, he's been a guide to residents, a mentor to young faculty, uh, a beacon of hope for patients. I couldn't be more pleased to uh, have a hand in conferring upon him the, the Judy Yin Shi Professorship in Anxiety Disorders. And now I'm pleased to have Dr. Bienvenu uh, and Dr. DeWeese uh, join me at the podium for the presentation of the Professorship Medallion. Do we have the professorship medallion? You have it. I oh, do. Well prepared. Thank you. Yes, I just <laughs> whipped that right out of my back pocket there. <laughs> um, Joe, you've heard from a number of us the accomplishments, and it's only really a small smattering, I, I know, of what you've done uh, for your patients, for our discovery mission, and for all the leaders that you've trained in medicine. Um, and that's why we're here today, because recognized as the highest honor that the School of Medicine can bestow on one of our faculty members is an endowed professorship. And they're so vital to, as you, we've heard, the mission that we have to train the leaders of medicine to put forward discover, our discovery mission that informs the best of patient care. And you have delivered on all three of those missions, Joe. You represent the best of Johns Hopkins. Thank you for that. So, Joe, on behalf of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, I'm pleased to present this medallion to you as a symbol of this honor and in celebration of your installation as the inaugural Judy Yin Shi PhD professorship in anxiety, professor in anxiety disorders in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. Joe, congratulations. It's very common, I think, uh, to be here and have imposter syndrome. And I was just blown away by my own imposter syndrome. Um, but uh, thank you, Jimmy, uh, Interim Dean DeWeese, Interim Provost Ganji, uh, colleagues, family, and friends for being here. I'm so proud to be the first Judy Yin Shi, PhD, professor in anxiety disorders. <laughs> I'm incredibly grateful uh, on behalf of the millions worldwide who suffer with anxiety disorders for this amazing honor. I'm particularly grateful, of course, to Dr. Shi, a true Renaissance woman for her rare generosity, but also to Jack and Mary McGlasson who've made substantial contributions to our work in anxiety disorders over the years, including this professorship. That's, this is amazing. I should tell you that I come by my interest in anxiety honestly, uh, in part, uh, as they say. That is, I think the tendency to become anxious and down um, and to cope in sometimes unhelpful ways uh, runs in my family. I was talking to my sister usually about this yesterday, and she was like, no, you're wrong. No, she didn't say that. Um, she said, uh, <laughs> but uh, our conversation led, uh, led me to say to myself, yeah, this is certainly an oversimplification of reality, um, uh, which is much richer and more interesting. Um, of course, our family is not unique in this respect. Uh, that is, these are very common conditions 
uh, with a complex genetic basis like so many other medical conditions. Thank you, Judy, for sharing your family's experience. What a great example of filial love and respect. I would love to say a bit more about the late Jack McGlasson, whom we lost less than a year ago. Jack suffered with uh, what we now call panic disorder, uh, which began in his young adulthood and was initially quite crippling. Nevertheless, with the help of my predecessor, Dr. Rudy Hernserik, Jack became quite a successful businessman. He was able to travel the country, sell medical supplies quite effectively. He was fearless in, in his business dealings. He was not shy about confronting anyone, including his doctors, <laughs> uh, about their shortcomings. Um, despite his hard side, though, he could be a real sweetheart with great generosity and a deep faith. I'm so happy that many of Mary and Jack's family and friends are with us today, including one of Jack's beloved goddaughters and even his Catholic confirmation sponsor. I'm looking forward to getting to know them better this evening. One thing Jack shared with me a few years ago is a letter he was startled to come across when going through his father's papers. Several things were striking about this letter. It was dated 1950. I think it was written to Jack's father by an endocrinologist in Kentucky shortly after the family moved to Baltimore. The internist mentioned pioneering work being done at the Hopkins uh, in this very building. Uh, and he recommended that Jack's father come here as soon as possible. Though the term panic disorder did not exist at the time, our field was still using a term coined by Sigmund Freud in the 1890s. Uh, it seemed as if Jack's father had a condition an awful lot like Jack. What is tragic is that we don't know if Jack's father ever came, as he never mentioned it to Jack, even when Jack was absolutely crippled early in the course of his illness. It's so good that today we can talk more openly about these conditions. I said I was proud to be the first Judy Sheep professor in anxiety disorders. Um, part of the reason is that Judy is one of my new heroes. I love that a person can do so many different things in a single lifetime. Um, mental health clinician, public policy analyst, m uh, fantastic mother, passionate and generous advocate, and amazing artist and musician. Um, so it's not just mine, it's also my bride, Holly's. Uh, you, you, you are our hero. Um, all with such seemingly effortless grace. So happy to count you and your fabulous husband, Lee McCabe, as friends. And I'm delighted that we're on the same team. As we've heard, there are incredible benefits to these professorships. For one thing, they allow a guy like me the time and cachet to teach about and thus advocate effectively for patients with anxiety, or I shouldn't just say patients, people with anxiety disorders uh, from a public health perspective. As an example, last year, when a, co a colleague representing the APA reached out to Jimmy, looking for a last minute replacement for a public debate on benzodiazepines, I agreed immediately before I even knew which side I would be arguing. <laughs> we debaters ended up learning a ton from each other as well as from the audience in what turned out to be a, quite a packed room. The title of the talk was Deprescribing Benzodiazepines. Um, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was great fun and it, it felt like it was breaking down barriers in thinking that people had uh, about psychiatric medications. Um, and. Uh, and the APA invited us back. So we just did this again in San Francisco. And um, this time it was again packed and there were, there were extra rooms where people could go and I don't know if they could see it on the screen or just hear it or what, but um, these overflow rooms. And I was like, this, this is the kind of thing that the Judy Shee professor should be doing. <laughs> um, I was talking to a colleague from Tufts who I've done some teaching with, Ed Silverman, 
Uh, and I was saying, you know, I think such and such, but what do I know? And he looked at me and responded something like, well, you're the Judici professor in anxiety disorders at Johns Hopkins. And it occurred to me what an incredible honor, but also responsibility this is. Um, I'm not sure what effect my new title will have in obtaining federal research funding, <laughs> but I guarantee you I updated my bio sketch the second I got the green light from Jimmy. Ultimately, of course, I think of this pr professorship as a wonderful investment in making life a little easier for the many of us who have anxiety disorders. The amazing thing is that it will endure for generations to come. I would like to thank many others today, though I've had to come with, to terms with the fact that I can only provide a sampling. Um, I'll start with Mike DeVito, uh, again, who's helped all along, but has been incredible arranging this event, which is quite a production, as you can imagine. Um, next, my family, many of whom are here in person, especially my bride, Holly Tomanek, who has been by my side for almost 27 years, uh, since my time as a research fellow with, with Bill Eaton. My mother, Marion, who has always inspired intellectual and interpersonal curiosity in me, is here from Louisiana. My father, who was also a Joe, Oscar Joseph Jr., um, set a fantastic example of compassionate doctrine and concern for the human condition. He's with me wherever I go. We're fortunately a close family, and my amazing sister, Eugenie, is here from Boston after flying all the way down to Louisiana to grab my mom, bring her back up here. Um, I'm also lucky to have been married into a wonderful family. And some of my in-laws are here, including Holly's twin sister, Ivy, and uh, her internist and toxicologist sister, Becky, both who, who are here from St. Louis. In terms of mentors and colleagues, I must mention our wonderful department directors over the last 30 years. That is my time here, including Drs. Paul McHugh, Ray DiPaolo, Costas Lequetzos as interim, and now Jimmy Potash. I'd also like to thank other leaders and colleagues who led me on my way, especially my main mentor for, for decades, Dr. Jerry Nestat, but also uh, Drs. Karen Swartz, Rudy Hernserik, Dale Needham, Jack Samuels, Mark Riddle, Paul Costa, Ken Kendler, Marie Steen, Peter Rabins, Peter Pronovost, Philip Slavney, Glenn Treesman, Michael Clark, Fred Lenz, Jim Fauerbach, George Everly, Everett Siegel, and Jennifer Haythornthwaite. And I'm sure I left many, many important people off that list. This is just a sampling. Over the years, I've also had the honor of working with talented mentees like, mentees like psychiatrist Dmitry Davidoff, Avi Gerson Blith, Liz Prince, and Sarah Andrews, as well as critical care physician Ann Parker and rehab psychologists Megan Hosey and Shira Zohar. I'm excited to add psychiatrist Suchita Batwara, who has just joined our faculty uh, and is sitting there in the back row. Um, finally, I'd like to give a shout out to colleagues who keep our anxiety disorders and consultation liaison psychiatry, clinical care, teaching, and research enterprise going, including doctors Paul Nestat, Hinda Dubin, Pat Triplett, and Pat Carroll, advanced practice nurses Liz Noyes, Laura Hoofring, and Maureen Lewis, and social workers Nicole Rivera and Michelle Goldman Ranger, and finally, medical office coordinators Marianne Kistner. Tom Moses, and now Sierra also. What a good thing it is to be part of such teams. Thank you very much. Wow, Joe, that was wonderful. You are the real deal, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> I don't think any of us have a shred of doubt. Uh, thanks to the family and the friends and the colleagues of Judy and Mary and, and, and Joe for joining us today. Uh, and I too want to add my thanks to Mike DeVito, who's done a superb job making all of this
come together. Uh, it's now a pleasure to invite everybody to continue the celebration uh, at the reception. Hope you'll stick around. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>